Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. I'm Martina Hestericová and you're listening to A View On, a podcast brought to you by Lonza. As it's true for all good things, even the very first season of A View On podcast has come to an end. Together, we explored exciting new technologies and platforms, such as exosomes and the power of human microbiome. We heard from experts in the industry, leaders of small and emerging biotech companies, as well as our internal experts from Lonza. In our very first episode, we were joined by Ricky Solorzano of Alevi, which is a company developing bioprinters and related materials. Ricky also told us about their ambitions of going into space. And it's honestly one of our most exciting projects. As one of the leaders within the world for bioprinting, we've done a lot of work over the years to position ourselves to launch a bioprinting extruder to the International Space Station. This would empower astronauts the ability to do more bioprinting experiments. Bioprinting in space, that's pretty cool. In another episode, Uwe Gottschalk from Lonza gave us an insight into the fascinating world of exosomes. So exosomes facilitate a horizontal gene transfer between cells. And in other words, they are something like the FedEx system of our body and their surface markers represent a postal delivery code. Exosomes are in the blood, they are in milk, they're basically in all fluids of multicellular organisms. In that episode, we learned about how truly exciting applications of exosomes can be. They can be used as delivery vehicles for therapeutic drugs or serve as an early detection for cancer. But exosomes can also provide a way to keep us younger and healthier for longer. So, first of all, there are emerging applications beyond healthcare. In the cosmetic field, in anti-aging, already today we can buy exosomes in lotions. There are companies that are offering the extraction of exosomes from cord blood or from young people only to retransfuse them when they are old. We also explored the possibility of treating cancer with cell-penetrating peptides. These ensure precise delivery of cancer-killing drugs. This approach is valid for treating all solid tumors. Here is what Per Helsand of Cybrexa had to say about this. The important takeaway here is that we are broadly and fundamentally targeting cancer cells, not an, ant- uh, an antigen or a mutation or some other biology that is specific to a subset uh, of patients. So this technology is broadly applicable to all solid tumors. Modern therapies also include small molecules, such as non-psychoactive derivatives of cannabinoids. Elaine Rowland from Emerald Health Pharmaceuticals came to talk about the synthesis, effects, and uses of such compounds. And we created several new molecules uh, by chemical synthesis. Those new molecules have even greater potential on health in, and in providing therapeutic benefits because they affect the endocannabinoid system more uh, strongly, as well as other receptors and other pathways. Now, last year, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna for their groundbreaking work on gene editing. In an episode dedicated to gene editing, we were joined by Andre Shulika of Selectis, who explained the importance of specific enzymes called DNA scissors, which are used in the process of editing genes. There are four families of DNA scissors available, and Selectis is totally technology agnostic. We've tested them all, and we've been developing them all. However, Selectis, over 20 years of investment in the field of gene editing, had come to the conclusion that the most flexible and the most versatile technology in the space, and also the more efficient and the safest, is the tailing. I think we can boldly say 
that 2020 has been written into history as a year of a global effort to fight the spread of COVID-19. So it was particularly exciting to talk to Silviu Itescu, who explained how stem cells, specifically those present in our blood vessels, can help to treat severe COVID-19 cases. So these cells are present in all of us, around blood vessels in all the vascularized tissues. And their role and function in these tissues throughout life is to sense inflammation through very specific receptors. They have receptors for major inflammatory cytokines. Uh, we believe that progressive degenerative conditions result from exhaustion of these mesenchymal cells or, or um, inadequate or insufficient numbers of these mesenchymal lineage cells and therefore replacement or, or um, um, delivery of large numbers of these cells we expect would, would then be able to manage the inflammatory process in a way that the endogenous cells cannot. We realized quite early on that um, that mechanism which we have um, focused on in GVHD also is a driver of uh, the, the number one cause of, of death in COVID-19, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that's pretty fascinating stuff. If you haven't heard these episodes, I recommend going back and having a listen. You can find more information about each episode from season one on lonza.com forward slash a hyphen view hyphen on. The second season is already in the making and I'm excited about the new topics. We will be taking a short break before season two, but you can already get ready to explore the importance of horseshoe crabs the secrets of successful vaccine manufacturing, the human microbiome and nutrition, oncolytic viruses, and much, much more already this summer. Take care and see you soon. Thank you all for listening. This was Martina Hesteritseva from Lonza. A View On is produced by Michael Mitchell with original music composed by Fabio Pinto.